All right, so mitosis and meiosis. We're going to look at mechanisms for cellular division in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, just a little background. We've talked a little bit about the cell. We've talked about its structure and how all living things are made up of cells. Um, but one of the postulates of the cell theory, and we've talked about the cell theory already in that um, the three postulates state that the cell is the basic unit of life and that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. And um, what's the other postulate? All living things are made up of cells. So we know that that is true. And that postulate that all cells arise from pre-existing cells, we're gonna look today at how pre-existing cells divide to form new cells. This is a requirement for life. And these uh, production of new cells are required in order for organisms to continue to grow you know, repair damage and obviously for reproduction. Um, cells contain genetic information in the form of DNA. We're clear about that. DNA is the uh, unit or content of heredity. That is what is actually passed from one generation to the next. So from parent to offspring, right? You're inheriting DNA from both your mom and dad. And we get to our next unit, we're gonna take a look at how that happens from a genetic standpoint, all right? But here today, we're gonna to look and see how cells divide, okay? And what's actually happening during that cell division, all right? And this cell division is actually a very critical uh, process in the cell. And it needs to happen with very, uh, significant accuracy and fidelity, all right? We know that there can definitely be detrimental results if a, a reproduction processes don't happen the way that they should. So when a cell divides, information in the DNA must be accurately replicated and copied in the, and therefore transmitted down to the daughter cells. And that happens through a series of steps, all right? And so we're gonna take a look at those steps today, uh, specifically uh, mitosis and meiosis, okay? These processes of the cell preparing for division and then ultimately splitting off into two daughter cells. And so, you know, just a little background. We've talked about this already a lot this semester, that inside of the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, there's going to be a large amount of DNA, right? That's where our DNA is housed, inside the nucleus of the cell. And so in this chapter, we're going to take a look at how DNA, right, which is our genetic material, how it's packaged into chromosomes. We're going to talk a little bit about chromosomes, and then how those chromosomes are then undergoing a process, uh, a series of steps, Okay, in which the parent cells transmit genetic information to the daughter cell through a process known as mitosis, and then how there's a reductive cell division uh, that is going to prepare our uh, gametes for sexual reproduction, and that process is known as meiosis. Okay, so we do want you to pay attention to some of the significant differences between um, these two. Uh, cell division processes. Mitosis and meiosis, they're two very different processes in terms of their purpose and the results, okay? So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as I'm talking today, what are some of the fundamental differences between these two steps, okay? So I mentioned the word chromosome earlier. What are chromosomes, okay? Chromosomes are the major carrier of genetic information in eukaryotic cells. Okay, so all of our genetic information are stored on what we know as structures uh, known as chromosomes. And these are basically um, arrangements of DNA uh, and proteins, all right? These chromosomes are gonna be found in the nucleus of the cell and they're made of uh, chromatin fibers. And again, this, this uh, structure that you see here sort of represents DNA wrapped around proteins, all right? So these chromosomes are super important. You've probably heard about the number of chromosomes inside of the human, right? Humans have, normal humans have a total of 46 chromosomes, okay? Achieved from 23 pairs, okay? This picture that I have here is a picture of a human karyotype. This is a karyotype right here, okay? A karyotype, write that word down. Karyotype shows us the um, number and arrangements of chromosomes inside of an organism. Okay, and we see here, this is a human karyotype as we see 23 pairs of chromosomes, okay, and one set of sex chromosomes, okay. These 23 pairs of chromosomes originate from both mom and dad, right? One set of chromosomes is inherited from your mother, 
and the other set of chromosomes is inherited from your father. Okay, so 23 pairs make a total of 46. All right, we're clear here in this karyotype that we see numbers 1 through 22 as numerals. Okay, these are our autosomes. Okay, these are the chromosomes that are dictating all of the um, different physiological features um, that we uh, exhibit. All right, now these, the single pair here that don't have numerals but letters, these are our sex chromosomes. Okay, and they're usually designated as a pair of either XX or XY. Looking at this karyotype right here, is this a male or a female? Can anyone take a guess? Female. It's a female. How do you know? XX. XX, right? So the sex chromosomes are how we identify an individual as either female or male, okay? The XX pair is going to be a female and the XY pair will be male. And we'll talk in a little bit more detail um, about that Y chromosome shortly, okay? And so, you know, uh, as we're looking at our chromosomes, we know that this genetic information that determines our being are basically due to these genes, okay? Any organism may have thousands of different genes in their bodies, okay? These genes are obviously responsible for coding for protein, and protein are therefore the functional units of our cells, right? And so in humans, there are over 20,000 genes that code for protein, right? And so it is these proteins that are responsible for cells getting their uh, jobs, if you will, their functionality, all right? And so we use the term gene. What is a gene? It is DNA, all right? By definition, we're going to say that a gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for a functional product, okay? And so we say that genes are informational units, okay? They provide information to carry out specific cell functions. So think with me, if you will. You have thousands of different cells in your body. How do all these cells get their different jobs, okay? How is your skin cell any different from, say, a beta cell that's produced in your pancreas, okay? The answer lies in the protein expression at any given moment in that cell. Depending on the combinations of genes and proteins that are expressed, that's going to dictate how that cell functions, right? So these genes are super important, right? And you definitely should understand this distinction that every cell in our body has the same um, genetic profile, the same amount of DNA, right? But depending on what genes are turned on or turned off at any given time will dictate how that cell actually functions, okay? And so, you know, as we're looking at the role of cell division and how these new cells that are being generated, information is being passed down from parent to offspring, these genes that we inherit are responsible for governing factors that we see physically and those that we can't see, behavioral things. So factors such as eye color, it's determined by your genes, the wing length in a fly, so how far apart these wings are, that's determined in their genes. Um, the seed color of peas, okay, they're gonna be dictated genetically. All right. In our next chapter, we're going to take a look at how uh, genetics or our genes dictate our uh, physical features, okay? Phenotypes and genotypes. You've probably heard about those terms before. And so anyway, the point that I'm making here today is that our genetic information, which is DNA, is organized into informational units that we call genes, all right? And it is these genes that are responsible for uh, the factors that determine what we look like, how we behave, and so forth, okay? And so chromosomes, so that DNA is, is, is packaged into chromosomes, right? And these chromosomes, as I said before, um, can vary in both size and number, depending on the species, right? As far as the human is concerned, we know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 in total, all right, we can look at the human karyotype and see those 23 pairs, how they are aligned, and um, 
the single pair of sex chromosomes, all right? Now, that number can vary depending on the species. So if I asked you a true or false question about whether or not all species have the same number of chromosomes, you should know that that's false. I, a, a mouse or a cat or a rabbit will not likely have the same number of chromosomes that a human does, okay? So point that I just made is that chromosomes differ amongst different species. Okay, every species have a specific number of chromosomes in their cells, right? Humans, and I should say that normal humans, because there are abnormalities where this doesn't happen. Humans have exactly 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells. Write that down, okay? The somatic cells are going to be those, all cells in our bodies apart from our sex cells. They're called somatic cells, okay? Other species have different chromosome numbers, right? And also, we should understand that the information that's contained on these chromosomes can also differ depending on the species, all right? For the human, we have um, various efforts that have been undertaken to understand all of the genes in our bodies. The Human Genome Project has done a great job of, of sort of mapping out the human genome and, and uh, understanding or elucidating which genes are found on which chromosomes which genes are responsible which pro for, for which properties, such as our eye color, hair color, and so forth. We know all of the genes that are in the human body and what their functions are, okay? And so that information becomes very useful as we think about um, pre pre uh, preventing or predicting the likelihood of um, developing a disease or trying to prevent the onset of diseases. If we can uh, look and analyze our genome, right, we can undergo genetic counseling and so forth to um, better understand our likelihood for being predisposed to certain diseases and illnesses and make decisions accordingly, right? There's a lot of genetic testing that's becoming quite popular nowadays and, um, you know, giving women choices, right? For example, um, I think there's genetic testing for things like the likelihood of your child coming out with things like Down syndrome and other uh, genetic-based abnormalities. Like Down syndrome is a genetic abnormality where the uh, individual has too many chromosomes, okay? And so anyway, um, point we're making here is that in a normal human, there are 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells. There are 23 chromosomes in our uh, sex cells, our gametes, and we know that that makes sense because the gametes are those cells that are involved in reproduction, right? The, the sex cells are our sperm and egg cell, right? And those two cells must unite in order to form a new individual. So anyway, um, what do we wanna look at today? We wanna look at this process of cell division, right? How does the organism, how does our body make new cells, right? Eukaryotic cell cycle, okay? We wanna identify the stages of the cell cycle and describe the principal events. What's taking place at each stage of the cell cycle? All right, let's take a look at that. Um, cell division is uh, something that happens, right? We know that our cells do not necessarily uh, grow indefinitely, all right? When cells reach a certain size, they usually stop growing or divide or die, okay? Not all cells divide, okay? But those that do, they undergo a process known as the cell cycle. And so the stages for which a cell goes from one cell division to the next, right, or a new cell is created, we call that the cell cycle, okay? The cell cycle can take anywhere from eight to 20 hours in plant and animal cells. It just depends, all right? We're gonna look and see what happens during the cell cycle, okay? Write this down. The cell cycle consists of two main phases, okay? Interphase, okay? If you're looking at this image right here, interface is represented by all of this activity illustrated in gray. This is interface, okay? And then there's M phase. M phase, okay? So the two main cells, the two main phases of the cell cycle are characterized by basically sort of like some preparation, Okay, and there's three things going on during interphase. Okay, there's a G1 phase. You've probably heard about these before. The G1 phase is when the cell is basically preparing, obtaining nutrients, growing, and so forth, preparing for division. S phase, which is a, which is a synthesis phase, this is where the cell is now going to duplicate its genetic material. So DNA replication will take place here. 
and we'll talk in just a moment why this is important. Okay, so we've got a growth phase, which is G1. We've got a synthesis phase, which is G, uh, S phase. DNA is being duplicated. And then there's G2, which is basically kind of another um, preparation and check and balance period to make sure that everything has happened the way that it should in the cell. And then there's M phase where mitosis actually takes place. And this is where uh, the cell will actually split from one cell into two new cells through a process known as cytokinesis. So you should have a general understanding of what happens during the cell cycle. This is a eukaryotic cell cycle, okay? Two main phases are interphase and M phase. You should be able to describe characteristically what's happening at each phase. Interphase has three stages, G1, S, and G2. And then there's M phase, where there are some series of steps that are taking place to prepare this cell for division. All right, we're gonna look at a little bit more detail now. So interphase, this is the longest phase of the cell cycle, okay? Most of the cell's life is spent in interphase, okay? When you think interphase, just think preparation, okay? Everything is happening at interphase, but one thing is not happening during interphase. There's no cell division occurring during interphase. Write that down, okay? What is happening during interphase is that the cell is uh, preparing, it's growing, it's synthesizing the needed materials, enzymes, etc. It's preparing for division, okay? That's what's happening from G1, S, and G2. It's preparing for division, okay? So we're talking here about how do we undergo cell division? How does one cell become two, two cells? Okay, and so there are steps in interphase, G1, S, and G2. Write those down. All right, so what's happening at G1? G1 phase, SCAP1 phase. This is the interval period during which no DNA synthesis is occurring. Basically what's happening here is normal growth and metabolism, okay? Uh, the cell is preparing for growth, taking in nutrients and so forth, okay? Um, this is typically the longest phase of the cell cycle, okay? Um, Molecules have been synthesized. Enzymes that are required for DNA synthesis are becoming active. Um, basically, it's preparing the cell to enter S phase. During S phase, this is a synthesis phase. This is a very important phase of the cell cycle because as one cell prepares to become two cells, it's gotta synthesize or duplicate its genetic material because the end results of this um, mitotic cell division is two daughter cells that are gonna be genetically identical. So in order for that to happen, this cell must produce an identical copy Okay, a duplicate copy of genetic material before it actually splits and becomes two cells. Okay, so during the S phase, DNA is replicated. Okay, histones are made so that the cell can make duplicate copies of the number of chromosomes that it contains. So in a human somatic cell that's undergoing um, the cell cycle, it has 46 cells to start with. And so during S phase, those not 46 chromosomes, I'm sorry, not 46 cells. The number of chromosomes will duplicate during S phase, okay? Once duplication of the genetic material occurs, the cell will enter another gap phase, and that's gonna be our G2 phase, okay? So S phase is characterized by synthesis, duplication of the number of chromosomes that are in that cell. G2 is the second gap phase where the cell is preparing for division, okay? 
This is a relatively short phase. There's a checkpoint that's going to make sure that all things have happened as they should before the sale commences into M phase. During M phase, there are two things happening. There's mitosis and then there's cytokinesis. Okay, mitosis are a series of steps where nuclear division is going to occur. These cells are going to undergo um, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, basically where these chromosomes are being manipulated to um, prepare for uh, separation, move into opposite ends of the cell, and then that nucleus will eventually uh, spread out. Okay, I'm sorry, the chromosomes will start to migrate towards opposite ends of the poles and the cytoplasm will eventually split down the middle into two new cells during a process known as cytokinesis. And so M phase is the phase of the cell cycle where two new cells are now created. So for those of us that are visual, this is a representation of what's happening during the eukaryotic cell cycle. Now this image is kind of kind of go in the opposite direction than the picture I showed you before, but the same thing is happening. These images can look different depending on your resource that you're using. So anyway, uh, we have interphase here, which is characterized, we said, by G1, S, and G2. So this picture is just basically moving on a a counterclockwise direction. So we start at G1, we said that that was gap phase one, and this is basically the uh, phase in which the cell was just kind of preparing, it's growing, going through normal metabolic activity, obtaining nutrients and so forth, okay, at G1. At S phase, this is our synthesis phase. Synthesis means uh, new DNA is being, uh, that DNA is being replicated, right? The number of chromosomes that are present in the cell will be duplicated during our S phase. Right, and G2 is the second gap phase, which is basically um, the period before uh, the cell enters M phase. All right, we're getting our uh, enzymes and so forth ready. And during M phase, M phase is when mitosis occurs and cytokinesis. Mitosis is characterized by a series of steps that are basically gonna prepare this cell for division, okay? Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then finally, uh, cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm will split into two cells. And that is how we go from one cell to two cells, okay? We should definitely understand that the end goal of the eukaryotic cell division is to produce two daughter cells that are gonna be genetically identical, okay? And so steps have to be taken to make sure that this starting cell generates the same DNA or genetic material, it duplicates its genetic material with fidelity so that when this daughter cell is created here, when this next cell, when it splits off into two cells from one, that it is going to be able to produce two genetically identical cells. And so, during M phase, the first part of M phase is mitosis, okay? The process of mitosis occurs over five stages. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then ultimately cytokinesis, okay? So what happens during prophase? Chromosomes start to compact, to, become, to, to compact and shorten and become visible. During metaphase, those chromosomes will start to align towards the center of the cell. You'll see this migration towards the center of the cell. 
in a phase, you're going to start to see these sister chromatids separate, right? Because the goal here now is to create two totally independent um, aggregates of chromatids in order to prepare for two new cells to be made. So during anaphase, these sister chromatids are going to separate. During telophase, these chromosomes are going to start to um, migrate towards opposite ends of the cell, right? So now we have two distinct sets of chromosomes where this uh, nuclei will start to sort of form around these two independent groups of chromosomes. And during cytokinesis, the uh, uh, division of the cytoplasm of that parent cell happens and we end up with two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the st cell that we started with, the parent cell. Okay. So visually, this is what's happening during mitosis, the steps of mitosis. We've got our prophase where we're starting to see our chromosomes compact and shorten and sort of become visible here during prophase. Okay. Metaphase, we're going to see these chromosomes start to line up towards the center of the cell. Anaphase, we're going to start to see these sister chromatids sort of separate and start migrating, if you will, towards opposite sides of the cell. Okay. Telophase, you're going to start to see the uh, a, a assembly of the uh, nuclei around these two sets of sister chromatids that have been separated. Okay, keeping in mind that the end goal here is that this cell is ultimately going to split down the middle and become two new cells. So during cytokinesis, you're going to start to see this cleavage furrow, right? And this cleavage will ultimately result in the um, separation or splitting of this single cell into two distinct daughter cells. This is just another illustration of what's happening during mitosis. I do want you to take some time after I'm done today to come back and walk through what's happening during each stage of mitosis, okay? But this represents uh, mitosis, right? This is somatic cell division, right? Somatic cells, as we distinguished earlier, are our body cells that contain 46 chromosomes, right? So we know that this process happens in all cells except our gametes right? Not our sex cells, because our sex cells only contain how many chromosomes each. How many? Can you repeat the question? How many chromosomes are in our sex cells? 23. 23. Perfect. All right. So mitosis occurs in our somatic cells. So this is sometimes referred to as somatic cell division, okay? This is just another illustration of what happens during somatic cell division or eukaryotic cell division, okay? What questions do we have so far? I have a question. Sure. Wait, so you know like how they have like the 23 and me like uh -huh. DNA kits? Uh -huh. What? I mean, are they is that what they're measuring? They're measuring our like our they're analyzing your genes. It's a genetic analysis. I um, mean it basically can like show you things like your past lineage. It can show you it's supposed to be able to I think identify like ancestors and stuff, right? Like people who may have been born of your same lineage. I don't know. I've never really looked. I'm not a geneticist. Um, you'll probably talk a lot more about that in your genetics course. That's probably your next biology course, biology 311. Um, but it's a genetic analysis. I know that it can probably identify your predisposition for diseases and things that are genetically um, determined right? If you have mutations and predispositions for cancers and things like that. So it's basically, yeah, genetic analysis. They're looking at your um, genes. What does your um, genetic profile look like? 
And I'm not certain of what all answers it'll give you. <laughs> yeah, but it's real. And that's, that's a real thing. And it's actually becoming really popular um, because there's, they're starting to link so many factors of our life to a gen, you know, to our genetics. And so they're able to learn and inform you of a lot of things about yourself. Again, I'm not really into genetics, so I don't know all of the factors that they can um, in, in, in elucidate for you, but yeah, that's what it is. It's a genetic analysis and they're basically looking at your genetic profile and they will tell you what they see and what they understand make predictions mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've seen the commercials yeah i have and i was like all of this from saliva really that's kind of crazy <laughs> oh yeah because your saliva contains dna so it's basically the saliva is just how they're going to extract your dna yep it's pretty interesting i don't know that i would ever do it like when you're like pregnant women when you're pregnant you are offered um like some genetic testing during pregnancy and like i said it, it's able to sort of predict the likelihood of your child having you know various diseases or disorders and so and i opted out of it like some people choose to do it i know one of my coworkers did it she had a family history of uh i forget what disease or whatever it was and so when she and her husband um found out she was expecting i mean and i guess you just kind of have to know yourself but she opted to um, have the genetic testing because she was just like yeah i know me i'm not the person to be able to you know have a child that you know may possibly uh, be born with various disabilities and so forth and so for me it was like oh i didn't want to know because then now you're faced with very hard decisions right that yeah I, and so um, fortunately she did end up having a very normal child but um you know things like i don't know spina bifida i think that's something they can test for spina bifida basically um your child will have very significant disabilities um where they're not mobile they usually aren't verbal all types of you know uh, abnormalities and so some people prefer to no, and I think it's just a, a matter of woman's choice and rights. And if you can know all that you can know and make an informed decision, um, some people choose to do that. I, I, I personally didn't want to know that when I was expecting, you know, but because I didn't want to be faced with a hard decision at that time. But yeah, genetic testing is good. It has very good purposes. Um, it allows us to be proactive about things to make, um, preventative measures if you see that you have mutations in genes that predispose you for breast cancer then you can do things prophylactically you know you can have a mastectomy you might can start some therapy early you know to you know reduce your chances of becoming you know a breast cancer statistic if that's something that's important to you so it has its place you just have to be um, aware of what, what that would mean. Like if you choose to undergo some type of genetic testing, you definitely got to be ready for what you're going to find out. Yep. A good question. What other questions do we have? Any other questions? All right. So that is mitosis. Mitosis is our somatic cell division that leads to the production of two identical daughter cells okay mm -hmm. we'll stop right here i'm sorry oh. you have another question I, yes i was gonna have a question um like you know i think well you might have already answered this but you know how they have like heredity tests to find out like your lineage mm 